Hey, my name is Jason. I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist, registered sleep technologist as well. And I was going to answer the question of what are areas, <clears throat> what are mixed apneas, what are central apneas, and what are obstructive apneas. So with it, I have a step two doodle board, and uh, I think this does. I think this keeps me on par with my production quality uh, using a child's doodle board. Oh yeah. <laughs> so here we go. Um, so first, when we're looking at this as far as a sleep study is concerned, the person has to be asleep. There's sleep disorders, so you gotta be asleep. Um, so, these two portions here, this is where it gets, you know, this, the brain activity is slow when the person is asleep, but then when it speeds up, this is where they're awake. Got it? <laughs> so we'll start with the obstructive apnea. So you have three channels. You have the nasal cannula during your sleep study. Then you have two belts. You have the thoracic belt, and then you have the abdominal belt. And that just tells us whether you're trying to breathe or not. So when you're asleep, you're breathing. And then this line flattens. So, so right here, this patient is asleep right here. This is 10 seconds or more for an obstructive apnea. And then right in here, they're going to wake up with a... And then you know, oftentimes if they're severe, they're gonna stop breathing again. Whereas these belts here, it tells us it's obstructive because they're trying to breathe. They're doing that and you know, thrusting their chest and abdomen, trying to draw in breath. But because there's an obstruction here, they aren't able to draw it until finally they wake up and start breathing again. That's obstructive. So, because they're all apneas, I'm pretty much gonna leave that there. So a mixed apnea is pretty much the same as an obstructive apnea, except it starts off being central, where you're not even trying to breathe. And then slowly you start trying to breathe. So it's kind of like your brain hasn't kicked in that you need to breathe yet, but then all of a sudden it realizes you need, realizes you need to breathe, but you can't breathe because you're obstructed. So. So that's a, what a mixed apnea looks like, again. It was during sleep. So the next is a central apnea. So a central apnea, you're not breathing, but you're also not even trying to breathe. And the interesting thing about central apnea is, is there's a different form, which is Shane Stokes respiration. And in that, you see kind of a waxing and waning. So I'm just, I'm just going to do the airflow, just the nasal part. So you kind of get this effect where it increases and decreases, increases and decreases very smoothly. And uh, that's Shane Stokes respiration, and that's when your crowded bodies are a lot of whack, uh, kind of like an air conditioning unit, ranging from super high to super low uh, temperatures. Um, it's a little bit how that works. But central apnea is, uh, I'm sorry, during this, oftentimes people won't wake up, and then it'll also go away when the person enters REM, <coughs> breathing will stabilize. So central apnea.
Then we get into a hypopnea would be probably the next one. And now a hypopnea is not a complete airflow cessation. Um, hypopnea is, what we use is, this is 100% of the breathing while they're asleep. I'm sorry, you do it while they're awake. When they're awake, you establish a baseline of how high it should be. And then once they fall asleep, if they fall to 50%, see that from the baseline here it's decreased by about 50% and then they wake up. Now what also has to accompany this, again it has to be 10 seconds long, they have to be asleep and you need to have an oxygen desaturation. So if they're at 96 here, percent that's the amount of oxygen in their blood. If they're there it needs to drop. to 92% or more. And then you have the arousal as well. And they're always delayed like that. Um, so these, even though it's not a complete obstructive apnea, it's still causing your blood oxygen levels to decrease, which is gonna give you a headache. And then you're also gonna wake up incredibly tired because you still keep waking up like this. Now this is the one that really pisses me off. This is ARERA. ARERA stands for a respiratory effort related arousal. If someone has a ton of these, they'll often get the diagnosis of uh, UARS, which is, um, oh, I'm going blank. Oh, upper airway resistance syndrome. Um, so this, I don't even need to change anything. It's pretty much, it's the exact same as I have hypopnea, except the desaturation is not is going to be anywhere from 1% up to 3%. If it goes 4%, it's a hypopnea. If it's just saturation of 1% to 3%, then all of a sudden it's a rira. Riras, they have to have an arousal, respiratory effort related arousal. You're still having a hard time drawing the breath. It's still enough to wake you up. But uh, as far as some insurance companies go, like Medicare, um, and then everyone else follows Medicare, practically. Um, they don't recognize these, so you're not going to be treated. You can have zero obstructive mixed or central apneas, absolutely nothing, and you could have rears just one after another, one after another, and they don't even look at it. Um, something that's extremely frustrating to me because these people go undiagnosed, and then you have to have a crafty physician that, that recognizes these and pleads your case so you can get treated for it. Anyway, that is Arira, and that is it. So I'm gonna do a couple other series right now that have to do with calculating your AHI and your RVI. What are those? I don't know, check out my other video. Remember to uh, visit my forum if you have any questions about this stuff. It's freecpapadvice.com forward slash forum, and I'm much better at answering questions there than I am here. Thanks.